before we go into knowing what I'm going to talk about, um, you know, if I would ask you, how much do you love your life and scale it from 1 to 10, how much would you rate it? From the scale of 1 to 10, how much would you rate your life or how satisfied are you with your life? If it is 9 and 10, that's like 100% satisfied, no issues, no regrets. But if it is one or two, then yeah, maybe, you know, there's something really wrong. You're not really happy about it. And I think most of us will fall under, well, eight, well, seven. There are things that I am not actually happy about, right? There are, there are certain things that we don't, really ha we don't really expect it to happen or some decisions that someone took for us. You know, we are Indian children. Our parents take most of the decisions for us. And we're like, man, what am I doing kind of thing, right? And even after that, uh, you know, life happens. But today morning, I want to convince you and tell you, love your life to the fullest. Love your life to the fullest. And I believe at the end of this, uh, in the end of this sermon, I believe that we love our life like 100%. You know, there are people in Bible that we see, most of them lived a life that they did not decide. God just tell, told them, come out, go here, go there, do this. And some decisions were taken in their life that they were not satisfied with, but they did go ahead with the voice of the Lord. And in the same way, we also have regrets and we have these questions, why? And today morning, I want to answer your questions, why? And I don't want to convince you and say all your worries are going to be taken away, but we're going to be happy with whatever comes in our life because I want to tell you this morning, our God is a God who goes before us. Our God is a God who goes before us. I want us to see this month as a month of breakthrough. No matter what is happening in our life, we're still going to have it. We're still going to struggle with it. We're still going to face those giants or the mountains. But this month is going to be a month of breakthrough. Amen. Shall we all turn our Bibles to Deuteronomy chapter 31 verse 8? It says, the Lord is the one who goes ahead of you. He will be with you. He will not fail you or forsake you. Do not fear or be dismayed. The Lord is the one who goes before you. This is a verse that was given to Moses when they came out of Israel, uh, came out of Egypt, and they were going to take over their land. And there were so many other nations that they have to take over. There were so many other places that they have to win their battle. But God is saying, hey, don't worry. And he says, there are strong mountains. There are strong people ahead of you. But you know what? I am going to go way ahead of you, and I'm going to shake their I'm going to shake their foundation. I'm going to win the battle for you. And then I'm going to ask you to go through it. This morning, I want you to understand that God wants us to live with the assurance that he is with us. At the same time, he wants us to know that we, that, I mean, he wants us to live a life by knowing that God is gone before us. He is with us. At the same time, he has gone before us. The life that he's prepared for you, the life that he has given to you, it is completely sorted and God has tested it. You know why I'm so sure about God going before us? It's because that's just part of his nature. That's who God is. Even before the world was formed, he was there. Just walking on the formless dark earth, knowing there's something beautiful that's going to come out of it. And he was just walking right there. And then he created something beautiful out there. And Jesus knew that there is much more glory for the mankind. So he went ahead of us and lived this life in this flesh for us. And he said, hey, I lived this life. I saw death. I did win over sin. I did win over death. Now you go ahead and walk this path. That's who our God is. And that's who we believe in. He goes way before us. No matter what you see ahead in your life, even we, some, might, some people might know, don't know what we would be five years from now, but God has already been there. He's already been your tomorrows, your next week, your next month. Whatever it is, God has already been there, and that's the God we believe in. And our God is an omnipotent God. He's an omnipresent God. There is no place that He cannot step in. There is no circumstances that he cannot step in. And there is nothing more powerful than our God. 
There's nothing more powerful than our God. So if you sit down as a student and think about, well, what am I going to do after this? What is my finance going to be like? Or if you're family or if you're thinking about your 10 years from now and you've been thinking about it, I want you to know all of that impossibilities is not impossible for our God. He's already stepped into our future and he's setting things right. You know why I'm so sure about it? And I want to read this verse out to you as a promise word of this month. Are you ready? You can just take your Bibles and I want us to read it out together. And uh, it might come on the screen as well. And let's all read it together. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 2. All right, give me a thumbs up if you're there. And it's already on the screen. All right, here we go. I will go before you and level the mountains. I will break down gates of bronze and cut through bars of iron. Shall we read it out again? I will go before you and I will level the mountains. I will break down the gates of bronze and I will cut through the bars of iron. God does not want us to be startled by the mountains that we are going to face. God doesn't want us to just stop in the front of our closed gates. God does not want us to be bound by our limitations and our excuses. God has tested your life. And he's saying, there are mountains, but you know what? I've gone before you and I've shaken them. All that you have to do is step up, face your life, face your challenges and speak against them because they have been commanded to fall before you. And God is saying, I'm not conducting experiments with your life because it's all prepared. You know, in in, in Psalms, the psalmist says, even though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil because he knows it's dark and evil, but he knows his shepherd will not lead him through the places that he has not tested. The shepherd will never take his flock to a place where he has not gone before and tested and seen if it's safe. Amen. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 2 says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned and the flames will not set a blaze on you. I want you to know the word when in all of these lines. It it does not say if, but God says when. Because the walk with God, it might not be easy, but God makes it possible. It It might not be a smooth sail, but God makes it a safe landing. And he says, when these things come, because I have said said these things for you, but they are not going to overtake you. Because God has gone before us and he has prepared the way for us. Amen. In our marriages, it might not be a smooth sailing. In our finances, some of us might be struggling with the ancestral curse or illness. But God is saying, hey, I know all these things are happening in your life. But you know what? I have shaken them already. I have stepped into those situations already. That when you face them, you will see the footprints of God. And as you stand there and speak in faith, they are going to just fall down before you. They're going to crush down before you. Amen. God has walked ahead before us and he's fought the battles that we think we cannot win. He comes to see where we are convinced that we cannot beat. He softened the bows of the arrow that worries that we will ta- that it will take us down. He knows our roads. He understands our coming traumas. He knows how to lead us through it. God understands how we feel when we walk in this life. In this path of life, this journey of life, he understands how we feel because he has been there already. He understands us. When you call out to him with pain, he understands us because he has been there and he has walked that path before you. God wants us to stand up. If any of us feel like, well, I am not very sure how I'm going to take my next move, I want to tell you with your assurance, stand up, chest up, chin up, and move forward. God has, has said greater things for us. For Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, when they stood up and said, I'm not going to worship this idol, God was already in the fire that was waiting for them, and he said, hey, come and join me. And the fire did not take them over. When the disciples were in the storm, the storm was up there, 
But all that they had to do was stand up and speak against it because Jesus had already commanded the storm to say, Hey, if they say, you will calm down. And that's why Jesus woke up and said, Why didn't you have little faith? I have already commanded things to listen to you. You have the power of, to speak against it. Amen. Let's speak against all the spirit of Jezebel in our life. All the person who's taking control of our life. All the lions that's been roaring in our life because God has already set an end for it. Let's change our prayer from, God, if this happens, it'll be great. But let's go into a prayer where saying, God, I know it is going to happen. It will end. So I'm going to ask you. God has set an end to all those voices that has been talking in our life. And all that we have to do is stand up and move forward and speak in faith. Every time you step into the places where God has set for you, all the path that God has set for you, grace has been unleashed for us. And the Holy Spirit has been deposited in the places wherever God has worked in our life. It's never like God just does the work and He go away. Holy Spirit is just waiting to have an encounter with us when we face these situations. This morning, I just don't want to talk about just sad moments and tough times, tribulations. I'm talking about the good moments as well. God has set amazing moments and beautiful events in our lives that when we step in there, the Holy Spirit is waiting to have an encounter with us. The Holy Spirit is waiting to have an encounter with us when we face those mountains as well because God has stepped there and He's deposited the Holy Spirit there for us. Step in with faith because in Psalms chapter 23 it says again, even though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I fear no evil because your staff and your rod, they comfort me. As an Indian kid, I don't understand how a rod would comfort you. Right? Like, we never know how a rod can comfort you. Like, you, your parents took it out, we only run, right? But Psalmist says, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Because the rod, it shows the lordship of God over your life. The staff, it shows the word of guidance in your life. So even if we're going to mess up, we can run back to the word of God and read it and get back and just face with confidence. And church, let's know that. The Lordship of our God is upon our life that nothing can decide your beginning and the end because the Lord, He reigns over our life and He's already set the beginning and the end of our faith and of our life and our happy times and our sad times. So no matter what you face in our life, face in your life, it's not going to decide it because the Lord is with you. Why should we stand up and face our life and accept it completely it's because God has gone before us and he's shaken things. In Joshua chapter 6, it says, I have delivered Jericho. When he talks to Joseph, that's what he says. I have delivered Jericho and now I want you to just go there and I want you to go around it six times. On the seventh time, just shout. That's what God is saying in our life. Just go and be happy with the life that I've given you in every way possible because I have delivered it all for you. And all that we have to do is as we go by in this life, we just have to explore the work of, our ha work of God's hand. The life that we have is a beautiful masterpiece of God. And we just have to praise Him. With our hands lifted high, just praise Him for whatever we go through in our life. Because God has delivered every situation to us. Every situation has been delivered and has been overcome and has been fought for us. So I want to say, be confident with the life that you have been given. The children that you have been given, the parents that you have been given, the house that you have been given, the finances, blah, 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 whatever. Be happy with it because God has gone before you in this life. And walking with God and as you move forward in this life, we will really know how to walk with God. It's really sad on how few churches, I'm not going to say all too few churches and few Christians just say what it means to walk with God. Just saying sweet words about, I am walking with Jesus. Just giving Him sweet names and just, you know, going with their emotions and stuff like that. Well, walking with God is a serious business. It's a lifetime commitment. 
we really have to understand what it means to walk with God. That when you walk with God, you will receive both good and bad. And even in your good, you are happily holding his hand and you are praising and you're walking with him. The Bible says two people cannot walk together unless they agree to walk together. We say, Jesus, I want to walk with you and I, and I know you're leading me. But when things turned out differently, we're like, God, where are you? God is still there. And all that we have to do is hold his hand and praise him and love God through it all. Walking with God is a serious commitment. It's a commitment of marriage that we come in as a husband and wife, they say, in death or life, in joy or sorrow, good or bad, I'm going to be with you. They, we all say, oh, the church is a bride of Christ, but the commitment of marriage, it starts from earth. The commitment to live as a bride of Christ starts from earth. Your walk with God has to start from this world. The commitment of being and to walk with the Lord, it starts from on the earth. And even in your good and your bad, in your joy and your sorrows, you will stay committed to walk with the Lord. And as you walk with the Lord, you will know how important it is to obey and to surrender. It is not that, God, I will walk with you and you will fulfill the desires of my heart. No. Say, God, I obey. God, I surrender. How the Bible says a wife should be obedient and be surrendering to the, Lord, to the, to the headship, to the, to the authority of her husband. In the same way, we are as a church, as a bride, we are called to live under the obedience and under the submission and under the lordship of our God. Amen. And that's the commitment of walking with the Lord. And walking with the Lord, it means consecrating yourself every single day. It means living in repentance every single day. It's not God, I, I, I'm, I am, we are imperfect. We have sin and temptations that we are facing in our life. But as we walk with God, as we set our step forward, our foot forward, when we, to walk in the path that God has set for us, consecrate yourself every single day. Purify yourself every single day. I'm not talking to people who take a shower every day. I'm talking about you cleansing your soul, detoxing your soul. I don't know how many of us repent, pray, pray the prayer of repentance every single day. Though we are not sinning every day, but just, just come and say, the lover of my soul, if I have been wrong in any way today, consciously or unconsciously, I want you to tell me if I'm wrong and I'm sorry about it. And I'm sorry about it, right? And when you walk with God, you walk in spirit. You don't walk in flesh. Because Galatians chapter 5 verse 16 it says, But I say, walk by spirit and you will not gratify the desires of your flesh. As we go ahead with this path of life, we have greater things in store for us. At the same time, we have depressing things for us. And as we keep going, we become pros at it. And we start, we start taking our own decisions and desires. We just let our flesh to take us over. To say, well, this has been comfortable for me, so I'm going to adjust and come, you know, settle here. Well, this is not very nice for me, so I'm going to move out. Well, Zoom calls are not very great for me. Well, it's pandemic. I don't have to go to church. It's not like that. You always live and walk in the spirit because whatever you face in your life, you can only see the manifestation of the glory of God only if you are living in spirit. Because when you face those challenges, it's the Holy Spirit that you encounter with. It's the Holy Spirit who steps forward and teach you how to go across, how to go about those situations and how to go through those circumstances in your life. But if we are not walking this life in spirit, we're going to let our carnal nature talk to us on how to do this. And then we will never be in sync with the Holy Spirit in this part of life. And walking with God makes you the enemy of the world. James chapter 4 verse 4 says, Don't you know that friendship with the world means enmity against God? Therefore, anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. 
Happy Friendship Day. Friendship Day with God and not with the world. With this, I, I, don't want, I want to put this front and say, we love everyone in this world. Every race, every caste, and every different kind of people. But we are not friends with the sin that the world is creating every single day. Anyone who walks in this church, we will accept them with all our heart and we will love them with all our heart. But we will never be friends with those, with those sin. Some of us would compromise with the sins of this world. Live in relationship, sex before marriage, homosexuality, theft and robbery and corruption, bribery, gossiping. What are those things that we have made friendship with that is going to destroy our friendship with God? When you say, Lord, I surrender my life to you and I decide to live this life for you, that means you have agreed to walk with Him and to, and to walk in this path that He has set for you, to have this friendship with Him. But when we agree with the world, when we compromise with the sin, He's saying, well, I am not going to do it, but I'm okay with it. Church, you are not called to be okay with the sin. We got to pray against it. We got to speak against it. The more you're going to compromise and adjust with it, your friendship with God is going to be shaken. Walk with God is an effort and diligently to be done. We have the 10 virgins in our Bible. In the Bible it says on how five were so careful to hold their lamp and they got some extra oil to keep it burning. Where the other five just got the lamp and they did not, have, did not have any resource on how to sustain it. Some of us, it's the salvation that God has given us. And we walk around saying, I have been saved. Salvation has been given to me. Great. But where is the oil of sustaining your salvation? Where is that ex extra effort that we take to keep our salvation going? To run this race and win this victoriously with God. Where is that extra effort? Where is that oil? Let's examine ourselves today. The God who goes before us has said it all for us. And step, it, step out in it confidently because he has made things straight for us. At the same time, as you walk in this life, let's be careful on how we walk with our Lord. Amen. I want us to take some time and to just examine our hearts. If we are walking with him. And if there's anything that you are afraid of, if there's anything that you, it's giving you otherwise thoughts, I want you to know God has gone before us and he set things straight. Always the testimony of how we found this place for church amazes me. Even before Pastor Sam and I, you know, came into this marriage life or even before we started looking for the church, God went way ahead of us and got this place ready for us. He got in a disagreement with someone who was here and he made this place clear for us. He went way ahead before us. Even before we could set our eyes on this location, he went away before us and he prepared this place. In the same way, even before you could set your eyes on something in your life, God has already done His work. All that you have to do is keep pushing forward in faith. Keep pushing forward in faith. Right now, I want you to just raise your hand and say, God, I thank you for my life. I thank you for every single person who are in my life. For my wife, my husband, my children, my parents, my colleagues, my students, whoever, my house, my clothes, whatever it is, I thank you. Shall we give a hearty thanks to God? Come on. With all your heart, just say thank you because I know you go before me. I know you go before me. I want you to say this prayer after me. Say, I will live and I will thrive through this life because I know, God, you have gone before me. Come on, say it out. I know the walls have been shaken. The bronze gate have been broken. 
I know my path has been straightened. I know the mountains have been leveled. I know that you have gone before me. And I will finish this race as a victor and not as a victim. I will finish this race as a victor because God has won this life for me. God has won every temptation and sin for me. I will live and I will walk through this path. Church, KCC, I want to tell you as a church, it's time for us to step forward. There might be persecutions, there might be pandemics after pandemics, but nothing should stop us from gearing up and preaching the word of God. He has set the path straight. It might not look comfortable, it might not look great, it might not look doable, but God is saying, hey church, go and do it. Spread across the world because I have gone before you. Nothing that the government says, nothing that the country does or no corruption in this world would ever decide when should we stop preaching the word of God. There is no such thing as the last miracle of God in the Bible. There is no such thing as the last work of God because he is still doing miracles. He is still working. There is no such thing as end only until God says so. So church, I want to tell you, nothing is going to stop us. Nothing is going to stop us. I want you to agree with us and say nothing is going to stop us. Because God has gone before us. God has broken every mountain. Shall we all just say the promise word of the month together I want you all to unmute your mic and read Isaiah chapter 45 verse 2 we're going to do, do this together shall we all just unmute the mics and confess this with faith the month of August to be a month of breakthrough come on let's read this together I will go before you and level the mountains I will break down the gates of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. Amen and amen.